She didn't come home last night. Well, she's probably out with some mates. Maybe went back to their hostel or their bed sit or their squat. Is it any wonder, though, with your antics? Oh, Kelly, again. Look, it was a drink with a mate. I am allowed to have female friends, you know. You flump. You were waving her around under Becky's nose. I was making a point. Do you expect her to take it? Oh, look, does it matter? Oh. Oh. The inside of my mouth was like the outside of a coconut. Well, if you've both given up, maybe you should start making proper plans. Get her moved out. Tell her she's fired. I bet she thinks I'm in the right state. Well, I'm not. Did you phone her? I've got other things to worry about. Like what? Well, like an appointment at the opticians this afternoon for a kickoff. What for? A fill-in. What do you think? A check-up and eye test? In the precinct? Yes. They've put me onto it. It says there's some crumpet in there. Oh, you are delightful. Anyways, I best go and get Amy up. I'll take her to school. I don't want you gracing the playground in that state. Come on, love. Let's make a move. The good if radio therapy meant listening to XFM all day. <laughs> Are you sure you want to come, Sue? Of course we do. Moral support, innit? I'm coming, but I just officially hate hospitals. How can you hate hospitals? They save people's lives. Well, that's what they're meant to do, unless they're being used as a garage to pump people's tyres up. All right, Soph. Do you think she'd be able to um, read magazines when she's having a treatment? It's not an hairdresser's. She'll be in a little room all by herself with a machine covering her. I wish this wasn't happening. Well, it's Belt and Brace's time. Your granddad's taken us, so we don't have to fret about parking as he's going to drop us off and pick us up later. Great. Family day out to the cancer wing. Right, wait to use Susan at the marmalade. Do you think you'll ever remember to put him his library book back in a book bag? We'll change him today. Well, why don't you send him a text to remind him? Let him take responsibility for once. Tell him what's happened. It's time to make friends. He'd love to go with you to the funeral. I mean, I don't mean he'd love it, but I, he'd want to come. I don't want him there. She lucky I'm going, vicious bint. She must have had some redeeming features. She produced you for a start. She'd have drowned me at birth if she could. Even the most amateur psychologist can see that you are struggling for a way to grieve. And if you're adamant that you don't want to tell Steve, then at least let us come with you. I ain't grieving for nothing or nobody. She got what were coming. Still, got a new lighter out of it, didn't I? So, one off, nothing. And, uh, and don't forget to change that library book this week, OK? I don't want to be on the end of one of Mrs Bunce's disapproving glares, right? It's in his bag. Anybody in need of all this? Hi, you, Grandad. No, you're all right, George. I'll walk. Yeah, we're not too pushed for time, thanks, George. We'd best walk, too. Possibly the atmosphere. You should ride a bike. Oh. OK. Well, uh, maybe see you and uh, I'll go this afternoon. <laughs> Bye, Simon. To all of See ya. See you later, crocodile. Be a good boy. Oh, God. Oh, don't ask me. Something to do with planning, I think. Peter. Quick word. Oh, hello. Ominous. No. Not at all. I've just had another cold call. Cheek of these people. Young lad. So I'm sorry. I can't talk to you now. I'm busy. Do you know what he said? Why? What are you doing? <laughs> it's the modern world, Gail. It'll all go back to normal one day. No computers, no automated this and that. It's like me in that car park. Uh, I don't suppose either of you have seen Becky, have you? Uh, no, love. Car parks where you have to enter your registration number. Oh, licence to print money. Scandalous. Kicked off in one the other day with Bill. I says to the warden, we're paying for the space, not the car. If I want to pass on my ticket, I'm perfectly entitled. It's an act of human kindness. Not allowed. Computer says no, we call it. Um, look, if you see her, you don't have to tell her I'm looking for her. We need to get away, Gail. No cold calls, no car parks, no computers, just you, me and a boat. Well, let's see. I'm going to go and wish Sally luck. She starts radiotherapy today. All I'm asking is for you to be open to reconsidering. George, 
It's our community school. It's walking distance, and like I've told you before, all his mates are there. He'd make new friends. And they'd be sharper kids, too. No. They'd be richer kids, that's all. Oh, don't fall for your father's gibberish. Take what you can. Put Simon first. I call it as I see it. I don't need my old man to tell me what to do. Exactly. Now, there's an open day at Oak Hill School this afternoon. Why don't we take the little lad there so he can see for himself? I'm only talking in principle now for next year. If it's going to shut you up, we'll go down the open day for ten minutes just to laugh at the uniforms. But ten minutes, that's all. Good man! Four pound ninety-six, Mrs. Hargreaves, but we'll call it a five so you know it's you. <laughs> Morning, Josh. Four pence, there you go. Keep the time now. Eating out the palm of your hand, Ashley. Recently widowed. You've got to keep things light. Now, what can I do for you, Steve? Got some lovely rumping this morning. Uh, half a pound of bacon, please, Ash. Um, not seen Becky, have you? Becky, no. Claire seen it, you know. Why? She absconded. No, oh, she didn't come home last night. Well, is there any wonder? I mean, you heard what happened with Kelly Crabtree. Nothing happened betwixt me and Kelly. Use your brains, man. Well, I'm sure it's easily explained. She'll probably be... No. No, I don't know. She'll probably be what? In a shopping trolley at the bottom of the canal. Oh, don't be so dark. But she's not flipping top cat. She's not in the habit of staying out all night, rifling through bins, getting up to mischief. Oh, I tell you what, I do not like that new teaching assistant, Mrs Bunce. She's ruffled your mother's feathers and old Steve. Something about Amy's library book not being in a book bag. Liz had a face on her to begin with, but you should have seen the colour it went. Is everything kosher? You not seen Becky, have you? Becky? Have you checked in the cafe? No. Mm. I'm not bothered anyway, I'm just asking him passing. Steve? Yes? Yeah. You're baking. What bait? Oh. How much do I owe you? Uh, am I early? Ridiculously, but I'm coming in anyway. They've got the rose closed down at Carpet World, so we're going to have to go the other way. Well, thanks for this, Dad. And until they finish that multi-storey car park, it's going to be a nightmare at the General. Hey, did I tell you about me and Joe McIntyre the other day at the retail park? Oh, with the traffic warden. <laughs> yeah. We're nearly a fist fight. Hey, he's got some temper on him, that lad. Well, he's got an edge to him, hasn't he? I thought you got on. Oh, I do to a fashion. I'm just saying what you see isn't always what you get. <laughs> oh, look who's talking. Hey, shut up. I've got my bus fare. I've been going out my mind, here. Looks like it. I have been up and down the street all morning, asking everyone. Steve, I'm not an idiot. You stood reading the sports page, and I heard you on toilet singing to the monkeys. How long have you been in? Where were you? I was at Roy Neely's. Why? I've had a bit of bad news, and I don't want to talk about it. I don't want any fuss. What bad news? And where are you going now? A woman that I used to know has died, so I'm going to a funeral. What, dressed like that? Well, it's a really classy affair. And by the way, I want the monkeys, it was the Bee Gees. I'm not in mourning. I don't even want to go. Well, who was she then? She was part of the old crowd. She used to be a bit of a wino. That makes you feel any better. Any better? You could come with me, if you like. You could take me on your bike. Uh, uh, no, you're not right. It's not really my cup of tea. Anyway, you know, I've not got a tracksuit, so I'll probably look a bit out of place at the uh, wake. <laughs> I won't be awake. There's no point giving me them looks. You just said yourself you didn't want to go, so I'm damned if I do. Oh, and Amy got off to school OK, thanks for asking. <laughs> Hi. Hiya. Now, I just uh, bought these uh, games. Uh, kids, uh, Nintendos. While they're in school? No, 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 I know that. And I was just going to, you know, like, drop them off or uh, like, leave them on the doorstep. But 
You were going to leave computer <laughs> games on the doorstep. <laughs> no, I can't. No, dare. no, if you weren't in, I probably would have uh, like taken them home with me. Lucky you. Yeah. Yeah, lucky me. I'll get them to call you after school. <sighs> Great. So, um, everything else uh, all right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Daddy wants permanent tattoos, so there was a bit of drama last night, <laughs> but apart from that. Funny. <laughs> Do you want to come in for coffee or something? Oh, no, 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 no. Come on, I won't disturb you. Okay, yeah. no problem. Yeah, all right, you know, you're walking, you know, if you like. Friday. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm working next Friday. I'm in the gay village. All right, well, not to worry. We're having a hard hat party at the bar. All right. Invites will be out soon. <laughs> anyway, sorry to disturb you. Um, good luck, Sal. Jan's been thinking of you. Oh, I knew there was voodoo involved somewhere along the line. <laughs> Thank you, Leanne. Yeah. Where are then? Thanks for offering to take this bill. Well, it's had a to Kevin. You know, if you've got to park down there all day, it gets a bit salty. It's six or seven quid now. All day? We'll only be in there for 15 minutes. We'll be in and out in no time. Fifteen minutes? I thought it was all afternoon. Oh, you don't listen, do you, Kevin? I mean, I'm sure there'll be some faffing around, but the actual procedure doesn't take very long at all. Now, come on, we don't want to be late on top of everything else. I mean, they both used to go on it every time we went past it. And it's 50p a pop. Well, I indulge in... I'm not paying 50p for a big plastic fire engine to gently rock back and forth. Haddy still goes on it, but I tell him to pretend. It's good for his imagination. Um, the imagination. Yeah, it's a much underrated tool in life's uh, toolbox. Honestly, they get so much. Yeah, sure. Why do you look so sceptical? <sighs> no, I just mean that uh, material things, yeah, I mean, they get plenty. Are you saying I don't give the twins enough love? No, uh... I'm just saying that if we were, you know, together a bit more, you know, at the same time, Dead. just, you know, just doing a few, um, you know, like family things. You know, and I am not suggesting that we get back together. That's, uh, I mean, I, I mean, that wouldn't be cool, I know. No, it wouldn't. And I'll tell you why. Because we'd mess it up all over again. And who would suffer then? Me? The children. Exactly. And that is why I will never suggest it. This is working really well. I feel like for the first time in years we're getting on, properly getting on, as friends. Absolutely. I couldn't be happier. I literally stopped to look at the back page of the Gazette for like two seconds. Brendan Callahan's out for a month, you know. I'm string. I just put them in the back of the cab last week. Told you. Hmm. Anyway, she starts trying to lay on all this guilt and self-pity. Like she's going to the funeral out of some kind of honour amongst thieves duty. And then she says, do you want to come with me? I don't like funerals. I have another woman. And Becca can't stand her by the sound of it. And she wants me to take her on the bike. I said, you can rule that right out. I bet you did. I've got better things to do in my afternoon, thank you very much. Like what? You sound like a pair of old women, you know. Do you argue over, like, who's going to pay for lunch? Yes, we do. But not in the way you think. I got it last time, by the way. I got you a kebab, you know. That was a present. I didn't ask for that. Even so... I and you only bought it because you were slaughtered and coming over all emotional. No, oh, what? Yeah, you kept telling how much you loved me. No, I didn't. And how beautiful Teresa was. Uh, um, uh, don't make a habit of eavesdropping. Oh, rubbish. You'll be just like us. Try not listening to a conversation in the back of your cab. It's the impossible not to. I didn't catch all of it, I must add. But I did hear the words Becky and Phil. Uh, I've been on about it to you and all, I chick. <laughs> on about it? But she did tell you. I made her go with her, can you believe? And? <laughs> You're joking, aren't you? She was a drunken old tramp by the sounds of it. I find your lack of respect almost unforgivable. I'm on the brink of asking you to leave. I never knew the woman, Roy. 
Becky finds things hard to express, but if you couldn't glean what she was going through this morning... Why couldn't you just have put everything aside and gone with her? I find it absolutely disgraceful, I really do. I've got the opticians for the start. I couldn't have gone even if I wanted to. Opticians. Look, I had to go to my mate's auntie's funeral a couple of months ago. Did Becky come with me? She didn't even say sorry to hear about it. Barely looked up from the television. This isn't a friend's auntie, this is your mother-in-law. And, and whether you met her or not, or whether you and Becky are estranged or otherwise, and regardless of whatever grudges Becky may hold against her, you should have done what was right and been at her side during these moments she needed you most. Mother-in-law? Why, it was Becky's mum. What? She didn't tell you that? She told us some old woman had died and she didn't want any fuss. Right, uh, what time's the funeral? She didn't say. Church or creme? She kept everything to herself. All right, no probs, no probs. I'll be back for the change later. I, 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 I wouldn't have wanted to break it to him like that. Honestly, Roy, not your fault, boss. How about that? Come on, let's get you in the car. I'll drive down every creme in Manchester, you never know. If my mum died, Lloyd, I'd tell her. Yeah, come on, Steve, where are you going? The only thing that's getting better this afternoon is my marriage. Because it's dead, Lloyd. Dead as a doorknob. Nail. Knob! What are you so pleased about? 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 <laughs> Go on. We've got a buyer for the flat. <laughs> yeah? And we're already looking for somewhere else, and we'll have made a bit of a profit. Good on you. Good on the pair of you. So what about you, Mr Platt? I'm just looking forward to something. What? Just a little trip away, but not a word to Gail. No, I am looking forward in general. Well, what other way is it to look? Over your shoulder, and that is the worst direction there is. <laughs> See ya. You're not spending any money now. I haven't got any, darling. But listen, money isn't everything. Money isn't even part of it when it gets down to brass tacks. Bad off. I'm gonna pin that up with all the others. Rosie Webster, age 19. We might even win a prize. Might even get a sticker. It's relaxing. Yeah, well, don't let none of the doctors see you. They might think you're dim witted. <laughs> get packed, okay? Yeah, I'll put it right around the back. Do you think an hour will be all right? Well, she's not long gone in, so I'll probably going through it all and whatnot, aren't I? There's a flaming traffic warden chatting about. Well, we'll see how we get on. Yeah. Steve! What are you doing? You can't collect Amy on that thing. I thought you were doing it. I've got a pub to run. <laughs> Do me a favour, could you? Unlike, oh, well, Becky's still AWOL, Steve's just gone off, and I'm going to have to shut the pub to go get Amy. Oh, of course, I'll get her. I don't blame you either after that talking to you got from Mrs Bunce. Just for the record, though, I thought she was well out of order. Yeah, at the end of the day, I said it'd be the kids who suffer, you know, if it all went pear shaped. Well, how she took it? <laughs> no, she bought a brave face, but, uh, you know, I think she was hoping for something uh, more. But I thought he was going round there to say to her that he wanted to get back together with her. Well, uh, I mean... Uh... The time he popped in for the chicken, remember? You said you wanted your family vaccinated and all. And you couldn't make your mind up whether you wanted your fillets with skin on or without. Well, I was open to the idea of it. Well, I most prefer skinless when it comes to chicken breast. Mm -hmm. No, giving Sunita another chance I'm talking about. But like I said to her, we have to be adult about it. Well, I'm glad it's all amicable. Hey, and I hope she's not too disappointed. Just these for now, anyway. Hey. Guess what I call these? A limousine of eggs. 
It's just a little thing I thought of. Oh, I hope. Well, look who it is. Hi, uh... So? What? Where were you all night? And all day? I was at the cafe. I'm going to have to put a collar on you. And could you not have put the green ship in Amy's book bag? Mrs Bunce had a right go at me. I was hoping Steve might have remembered. Well, they can't change the library book if it isn't in the bag. I know they can't, and I'm trying to stay on top of things. It wouldn't hurt for him to put his daughter first for a change, you know. Oh, his daughter now, is it? We told him he's safe. Saw him earlier, briefly. I'm going to go and see Amy. She's watching television. Uh, can I just borrow a light before you go? Yeah. She's new. Where are Mum's? You been in touch with your mum? Yeah, I went to a funeral this afternoon. I'm going to go and see to Amy. What did you just say? Your mum's dead. As a doorknob. Now. Knob. You haven't told Steve. Coronation Street continues in half an hour. <laughs>